Kenya, where we are sitting not quite smack bang in the middle of the migration, but just a little way off to the side. Now, a quick introduction for those of you that are perhaps new to these live safaris. My name is Jamie. This morning, Manu is on camera with me, and we have Chandra in the back as well, who's been filming some behind-the-scenes stuff. They've been on their balloon ride already, and we have a male lion. We actually have two male lions, and what's funny about these male lions is that they're mocking me because this is where I had these two little boys a couple of weeks ago. I can't even remember when it was. And it was one of our all-night evenings where we were going to stay up all night, follow the animals, and they lay down and looked for all intents and purposes like they were fast asleep, at which point I decided to take that opportunity to reverse the car a little bit so that I could hop out for a moment. I don't think I need to paint you a picture. And they disappeared completely. And it's the same two boys in exactly the same place where I lost them, as if to say we've been waiting for you the entire time. There were two young males, and in fact, when I first met them, I was seriously surprised to see them roaring and scent marking around this area. It was very strange and unexpected. Now, Donna, very good morning to you. You'd like to know if lions often sleep in trees in the Mara. They do. They regularly sleep in trees, and the reason that they do that is to escape the tsetse flies and essentially to find themselves a nice, cool, breezy patch. So a tree works very well. They'll plant themselves on a nice... I haven't seen any male lions do it yet. I've seen the cubs and I've seen the lionesses up in trees, Balanites in particular, and also, of course, the beautiful shepherd's trees that we get out here. is a very unexpected picture if you, like me, have spent a lot of time in South Africa where we do not see lions in trees. It's something that I found very disconcerting initially to all of a sudden see this massive lion paw dangling out of a branch that didn't, didn't really look like it could support them. I don't know who these males are. I have absolutely no idea, but that's relatively common out here. I will try and find out where their origins are, where they, where they have come from. But isn't he adorable? Look at his little scruffy mane. Oh, oh, we're going to have some play. There you go, using the side of the road as cover. Yes, very subtle. Nobody can see you, slinky cat. <laughs> Slow advance. Now, Chitty Chatty Meg, while we watch um, this little chap who looks a little bit like an adolescent boy trying to grow a beard, he'd like to know when he will get his full mane. And around about five or so, it'll be full, completely filled out. They're going to pounce on each other shortly. Let's just watch how this plays out, and then I'll tell you a bit more about their manes. Creeping forward. <laughs> little scrap turned into a little bit of a fiction. So we're talking about their manes. Their manes will only really fill out completely at around about five. And actually, it's only when you're looking at a male lion of around seven years old that they've really fully got a magnificent mane of hair. At this age, and I would guess that these male lions being hmm, around about two, two and a half, maybe. Obviously, the one on the left is slightly older, maybe. But at this age, they are truly entertaining looking. I love, I've got such a soft spot for young male lions. Hello, my boy. Oh, you're a big boy. You might not be fully grown yet, but you're not lacking in size. You're going to be cheeky. Hmm? Hello, my boy. Here we go. Don't, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Hey. Don't sniff my tire. Don't lick my tire, please. Wouldn't be the first time. No, you can come. It's all right. You're welcome. <laughs> We've had it a few times with the lions in the Mara, where they slightly overstep the boundaries just a little bit, and they just need a gentle reminder. It's not that they're vicious or angry or going to attack us or jump into the car. They're just so used to vehicles moving around that they occasionally forget that perhaps it's not such a good idea to come and sniff our tire. 
And in fact, Brent had one lioness lick his tire. And I had a sub-adult cub that wanted to try and jump into the car onto Dave's, play with Dave in the back with the camera. So it's just something for us to keep an eye on. He's now put himself, this is so inconvenient, mister. He's in the shade. <laughs> He's in the shade of the vehicle. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how we're going to shift around. I'm going to have to switch on so I can reposition. Let's go back across to Tara. I hope she's enjoying her Bushveld bumbles.